Okay, so Dan Rickard back. Uh, this is a continuation of the first video. So we're getting back to this ball bounce, and we'll press play. We've got the basic ball bounce happening. We've adjusted the curves a little bit. We've got a, a ball bounce happening from, uh, or a ball animation happening through 20 keyframes, or 20 frames. It's got three keyframes in it. And that's about it. So let's add a little bit of squash and stretch to this. We will have to add a few more keyframes and consider how things squash and when they squash and so on. All right, so ball comes down, it leaves. In order to use squash and stretch, we, we need to start thinking about weight, volume, speed, all of these different things. And essentially, that's what squash and stretch does for us. It helps accentuate those, those values. Um, so depending on what type of ball this is, it may have more or less squash or stretch than something else. If it was a water balloon, um, as it fell, it might distort a little bit in shape. And then as it hit, we know it's going to distort and really blow out to the sides. And as it leaves again, it probably won't bounce that high, but it's going to kind of jiggle all the way through and then it'll splat again as it comes back down and so on. If it was a ping pong ball, there wouldn't be a whole lot of distortion or squash or stretch at all because it's a very rigid plastic and it'll simply bounce and bounce and bounce. You might see a little bit with super slow-mo and if you're looking back at one of these uh, bouncing ping pong balls. So let's add a bit of squash and stretch on this. Um, but we're going to plan it out first. So at keyframe 0 and at 20, there will be no scaling. Okay. Also, we want to turn your scale tool on here because we're going to be using scale. Make sure you're only using the select and squash icon. If you use these other ones, you won't be squashing it. You'll simply be scaling it downwards. Big difference. right? So let's just see that for a second. This is scaling it down. Notice that it doesn't push out to the sides. right? And if we use this, as you push down, it pushes out. So that's your squash. This is also your stretch if you pull it the other way. The sides should come in as you pull up. Okay, so you have a much more squashy type of feel this way than you do when you have just a regular scale tool on. Okay, much different. So select and squash. All right. Um, so the select and squash won't be used for keyframe 20. It will be used for 10 as well as a couple keyframes around it. Okay, um, and maybe maybe some supporting keyframes a little bit further to help retain that initial shape, that initial scale. So let's do this. At keyframe 20, we've already got it locked in. So we, if, you know, if we hit K, that, that locks in all these values, that's fine. Let's go to, let's take this key and actually copy it at about keyframe 8. Now you might be wondering why we're doing that, but we'll get that in a second. We're also going to take the same keyframe, hold down shift, and copy it to keyframe 12. So what does that do? I mean, essentially, this is our impact. We've just stretched that impact over five keyframes. So if we press play, it's got this really strange kind of bounce on it. Well, let's go into the curve editor for a second and see what's going on. Okay, so the Z position, we have this happening. So that's why it looks like there's a bit of a bounce because it goes down and up and then down a bit and up a bit and down. So let's just take those. We'll put it on fast tangents. Okay, that's just for now. We can always change that later. So essentially we want that. Right, so there's a slight pause down here as it, as it hits the ground. But that pause is going to be filled up with squashing movement. Okay, so this is really the impact point now, 8. And as it leaves, this is the leaving point, okay, or the other side of the impact. This five or six keyframes in the center here, this is going to be squashing movement. And we're going to be recording that. Okay, so at this point, we're going to leave it as it is. So the scale value is going to stay the same, and it's going to stay the same. We're going to change that in a minute. Right now, let's go to keyframe 10 and squash this down. Okay, so if we scrub through, it comes down and it goes squash and lifts up again and goes. Press play. 
you know what, that almost works as it is. Okay? It's got a little bit of squash to it. It feels somewhat natural, right? Um, what we can do though, this is, is only half of the half the battle here. We have squash in there. It's nice to have a little bit of stretch as well. So I'm going to go to maybe keyframe 12 and stretch it up a bit. Not a whole lot. I don't want to do something you know like this. Just a little bit. So it comes down, retains its shape, it hits, squashes into the ground, and then the ground and the tension of the object push it away. And then it comes back up to its regular shape. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And it's super, super easy. Okay. Um, if you wanted to adjust this a little bit further, I would go into the curve editor and you know you can go back to this Z position here. We make this. Uh, we can make these all um, spline again, and increase the angle a little bit more to make it a bit snappier. Okay, you can always increase these a little bit more as well. There we go. We've got a nice little ball bounce happening. Some people, what they do is they'll they'll take this this initial key and they'll stretch that out as well. So it's as it's falling, it's changing shape and it hits and it squashes and it goes up and you know what you can do that. It works also as you can see. Um, I prefer to keep it more like this, where it retains some type of shape through most of it before it hits the ground. As it hits the ground, it squashes, it rockets away. And it retains its shape again. Okay, so that's a simple ball bounce with a bit of squash and stretch. Look forward to the next video.